Hi, thank you for joining us for Grey Barn Rising. Sitting here with Bootsy Beagle and reading the poems this evening of the great American poet Robert Duncan. Robert Duncan was born in 1919 and he left the body in 1988. One of the most profound American poets with a deep influence whose um, influence still reaches into American poetry today, particularly any poets who are interested in the ways that language itself operates. Duncan was an incredibly erudite man who uh, was a scholar and a deep reader of the poetry of uh, the poet H.D. He was very involved with myth and with the processes of how language itself operated. His poems are deeply musical and often composed in a field. Uh, we would associate them with the, the Black Mountain School of, of, of Poetry. He was a member of the Berkeley Renaissance. They had great flowering in American poetry in the Bay Area in the 1950s, along with uh, his uh, friend Jack Spicer and Robin Blazer. And um, they actually lived across the Bay from the Beat Poets in San Francisco and uh, exert a profound influence on American poetry. I'd like to begin by reading um, his famous poem, Often I Am Permitted to Return to a Meadow, from uh, the opening of the field. Often I am permitted to return to a meadow as if it were a scene made up by the mind that is not mine, but is a made place that is mine it is so near to the heart, an eternal pasture folded in all thought, so that there is a hall therein that is a made place created by light, where from the shadows that our forms fall, where from fall all architectures I am, I say are likenesses of the first beloved, whose flowers are flames lit to the lady. She it is queen under the hill, whose hosts are a disturbance of words within words that is a field folded. It is only a dream of the grass blowing east against the source of the sun in an hour before the sun's going down, whose secret we see in a children's game of ring around of roses told Often, I am permitted to return to a meadow as if it were a given property of the mind that certain bounds hold against chaos that is a place of first permission, everlasting omen of what is. One of the things I deeply admire about the poetry of Robert Duncan is that it's incredibly intellectual in terms of its argumentative structure, and yet you never feel involved or yoked too deeply by the argument. It yields to visionary poetics in part because of his great ear and the musicality of the poem. I'd like to read now my favorite Robert Duncan poem and another of his famous poems, My Mother Would Be a Falconress. My mother would be a falconress. My mother would be a falconress, and I, her gay falcon treading her wrist, would fly to bring back from the blue of the sky to her, bleeding, a prize, where I dream in my little hood with many bells, jangling when I turn my head. My mother would be a falconress, and she sends me as far as her will goes. She lets me ride to the end of her curb where I fall back in anguish. I dread that she will cast me away. For I fall, I miss, take, I fail in her mission. She would bring down the little birds. And I would bring down the little birds. When will she let me bring down the little birds, pierced from their flight with their necks broken, their heads like flowers limp from the stem? 
I tread my mother's wrist and would draw blood. Behind the little hood, my eyes are hooded. I have gone back into my hooded silence, talking to myself and dropping off to sleep. For she has muffled my dreams in the hood she has made me, sewn round with bells, jangling when I move. She rides with her little falcon upon her wrist. She uses a barb that brings me to cower. She sends me abroad to try my wings, and I come back to her. I would bring down the little birds to her. I may not tear into. I must bring back perfectly. I tear at her wrist with my beak to draw blood, and her eye holds me, anguished, terrifying. She draws a limit to my flight, never beyond my sight, she says. She trains me to fetch and to limit myself in fetching. She rewards me with meat for my dinner, but I must never eat what she sends me to bring her. Yet it would have been beautiful if she would have carried me always in a little hood with the bells ringing at her wrist and her riding to the great falcon hunt and me flying up to the curb of my heart from her heart to bring down the skylark from the blue to her feet, straining and then released for the flight. My mother would be a falcon wrist, and I, her jare falcon, raised at her will from her wrist sent flying, as if I were her own pride, as if her pride knew no limits, as if her mind sought in me flight beyond the horizon. Ah, but high, high in the air I flew, and far, far beyond the curb of her will, where the blue hills where the falcons nest. And then I saw west to the dying sun. It seemed my human soul went down in flames. I tore at her wrist at the hold she had for me until the blood ran hot and I heard her cry out far, far beyond the curb of her will to horizons of stars beyond the ringing hills of the world where the falcons nest. I saw, and I tore at her wrist with my savage beak. I flew as if sight flew from the anguish in her eye beyond her sight, sent from my striking loose from the cruel strike at her wrist, striking out from the blood to be free of her. My mother would be a falcon wrist, and even now, years after this, when the wounds I left her had surely healed, and the woman is dead. Her fierce eyes closed, and if her heart were broken, it is stilled. I would be a falcon and go free. I tread her wrist and wear the hood, talking to myself, and would draw blood. It's quite an incredible poem uh, for the way it moves and it's, it's repetitions that seem to repeat not in a pattern that we can anticipate. Uh, always reminds me, at least my personal reading of this poem, the way the, uh, the falcon flies out in ways that we can anticipate and not anticipate the animal part of us that we can know and yet not know. It's only one small uh, partial interpretation of uh, the way that form equals content in this poem, but I think Duncan is certainly a master in bringing together the form of the poem with the content of what he's trying to say. Um, I read that from the selected poems uh, of Robert Duncan, and I also read this evening from The Opening of the Field. I hope you enjoyed the, the poetry of Robert Duncan, and I hope that uh, this will encourage you to seek more of his work and, um, and enjoy it. I think it's rich and deep and that there's so much to gain from it. Thanks for joining.